Hello, it's Bruce here again. Just want to spend a little bit of time today talking about uh, weatherproofing all the holes that we tend to poke into the beautiful roofs that we make on our models. As you can see, I have a uh, simulated slate roof on this model. Um, and it doesn't really matter about uh, the type of roofing material that you use for the uh, purposes of our discussion today, but uh, I just want to make a blatant uh, advertisement for one of my previous videos. I, I do have a video uh, posted on uh, my uh, YouTube channel that shows how to simulate slate roofs. And if you see, there's metal roof caps on the, the three levels of roof here. And uh, it ha it is made they were made out of copper, and they're starting to weather and show that uh, greenish, bluish verdigris. And again, uh, plug another video. I do have a video that shows uh, how we can model the verdigris on uh, a copper flashing and copper roofing. But uh, for the purposes of today, uh, we want to look at uh, what we do around uh, all those holes we put into our roofs for air vents and uh, uh, smokestacks and uh, chimneys, et cetera, et cetera. And once you poke a hole in the roof, just like in the real world, we should be making some provision for making it waterproof uh, after we're done with our work. And if you look at this particular model, you'll see uh, both examples of what I want to talk about today. So we have a uh, metal smokestack here. And uh, we obviously had to break through the roof. Um, and first thing I did to simulate uh, a solution to that is to put in a piece of simulated metal flashing around the bottom of the smokestack. And then came back with roof tar and added roof tar both around uh, the smoke jack itself, and then around the flashing on the roof, uh, finished up with a little bit of uh, rust powder and uh, called it good. So we want to look at, you know, ways to do the flashing and ways to do the roof tar. And neither of them is very difficult. Let's start with the, uh, with the flashing. By the way, this is a... Uh, old Campbell kit called DeWitt's Depository. It's always been a kit I liked uh, the lines on. And uh, I've modified it a little bit. Uh, believe it or not, they did not have a provision for a uh, foundation, so I added a foundation. Um, I think I put an extra loading dock on and uh, so forth. But it is, it is a model that always caught my eye with the different roof lines and so forth. Fairly simple, yet uh, elegant. And it also turned out to be um, one in my series of um, structures that I named after our grandkids. In this case, it is... Uh, yeah, come on, get into focus there. You were in focus. There it is. Ellie's Electrical Supply Company after granddaughter Ellie. So getting back to uh, the topic at hand, let's start with uh, the roof flashing. Now, I don't know why people stay away from it uh, as much as they do, but uh, you know, I often reach for a piece of cardboard or cardstock or heavy paper uh, to solve uh, the problems that we have. And in the case of uh, flashing for the roof, uh, three by five cards in N scale and in HO scale gives you the proper thickness. Remember in the real world it's going to be a sheet of uh, tin or a sheet of uh, uh, some other thin metal that they're using. So it's not going to be something thick. So you can use uh, something like a three by five card. Or if you prefer working in styrene, uh, you can go with uh, some styrene sheeting. And in this case, uh, for again, N scale and HO scale, um, plain 
and the thickness of uh, one hundredth of an inch is uh, a pretty good simulation for uh, for the kind of flashing. And if you're modeling in S scale or O scale or G scale, you could go a little bit thicker. So what I did on the Ellie's model there was I did use a 3x5 card. And uh, the first thing that uh, I do is I find it's easier to work with a strip rather than the tiny little square. So I cut a strip uh, off of the 3x5 card a scale two feet wide, all the way down, two feet. And then on the back, I have marked off, and I think you can see it, I've marked off lines every two feet, but not separated them. And a simple technique when you're working with a square to find the center is just to you know, draw the two diagonals and dead center of that is the center where you're going to want to drill the hole for the vent. Drilling a hole in paper is not difficult. Um, I always start with a smaller uh, bit in a pin vise uh, to get the first hole going and uh, follow up with a, uh, a larger bit to bring it out to the size of the hole that I need. And in this case, I'm using one of our uh, favorite items for a smoke vent which is a coffee stirrer from, uh, you know, Wendy's or McDonald's or your Starbucks or whoever, which I've painted a rust color for this one. So you find a uh, bit that is the same size or a little bit uh, larger. And remember that if, if you're dealing with a flat roof, you can go with uh, the exact size or diameter of that uh, uh, stirrer there. But if you're on an angle on the roof, if you're on, on an angle, you're going to want to make that hole just a little bit bigger because you're going to be coming in with your smoke jack uh, at, a, at an angle. So you're going to need a little more clearance. So, you know, among the most useful tools any modeler has are these uh, pin vices. And uh, I, I must say I have a weakness for them. I, I have many more than I can justify having. And... Uh, Somehow keep buying more anyway, including this obnoxious behemoth that uh, I just couldn't resist. And uh, tell you the truth, in all the years I've been modeling, I probably used it uh, two or three times. It will hold, uh, you know, full-size bits up to a half inch. And I did use it uh, on this latest build to... Uh, drill the holes for these uh, smoke vents through the subroof, which is uh, thin plywood. So, um, you know, in your tools, um, as you slowly gather them, get yourself a couple of uh, pin vices. And so you just drill a hole down through, uh, through your pin vise. Now I would cut, uh, cut that to make it uh, two square feet, and I have my flashing, which you can just glue around the base of your uh, smoke vent. Come back, uh, you know, with some uh, chalks or whatever to do rusting. Uh, this I only used a, a marker on it to make it gray, but I would probably be painting it uh, my favorite black. And my favorite black is uh, grimy black. And, um, you know, all modelers had to go through this a few years back. We, we were used to using uh, polyscale uh, and flow quill paints, and then when they were discontinued, uh, we all went scrambling to find similar colors that we used to. Uh, this product is put out by Micromark, and I've been using a few of them, including the grimy black, and have been satisfied with them. Um, they do sell it in two thicknesses, I'll call it, uh, the same colors, one for brush application, which is what I use, and uh, the other one is for uh, airbrush application. But uh, grimy black is, is my go-to. Now when you're, when you're done with, your, with uh, installing your flashing, what you're going to want to do is come back with some tar, which I'll show you how to make in a minute, and put it all around the edges of the flashing uh, where the flashing meets the roof and you'd want to put some tar on top of the flashing around your smoke vent. 
So let's talk about uh, making that roof tar. Uh, I think you can see uh, here that I have already uh, put some around one of these large smoke vents on my engine house. And uh, I still have one to do, and I'm going to show you right now how to do that. Let me bring this down a little bit and back it up a little bit. There. Okay. I start by taking my uh, favorite white glue, which is Aileen's Tacky Glue. And I do use also Elmer's uh, white glue. Um, this is a little thicker, um, tacks up a little quicker, so I, I like to use it when I'm building in wood. And I'm going to put a good sized dollop of it onto that shiny paper that I talked about in my last video, which is really the backings from those little sheets of postage stamps that uh, we in the States get. Then I'm going to take my grimy black paint and put uh, a drop or two right into that glue. Okay, and I am going to take, and let me zoom in a little bit on it. I'm going to take a uh, toothpick and stir it around until that glue becomes black all the way through, leaving no white spots. And there's my tar. And you can see, I think, that uh, it actually has a pretty much tar-like uh, texture to it, too. Now, over the years, I've tried different things. I tried to apply it with uh, stiff paintbrushes and so forth, and I found out, really, that the, the best way to apply it is, indeed, with a toothpick. This is a handy block that gives me uh, something to rest my... Uh, hand on as I, as I work on the roof. Believe me, you would be uh, entertained wildly if I uh, tried to freehand uh, working on that roof without that support there. You'll see what a 75-year-old's uh, steady hands are like. Okay. So I get a little bit onto my toothpick and just rub it down at the base and work my way around. Now what I found again over the years is don't overwork it. Um, put it down and just let it kind of shape itself. You're going to probably make a mess if you try to uh, finagle it once it's down on your rooftop. And I have to switch the angle a little bit and come around this side. And just work your way around. It'll actually fill up a pretty good sized gap if you overdid the size of your uh, hole in the roof. So it's, uh, and it will dry. Uh, fairly hard in a, in a couple hours. tell you, there are some challenges uh, when you have a hobby like this as you get older. And the steadiness of your hands is one of them. But, as you can see, I do not let it hold me back. I try to find ways to, to work around it. Otherwise, I will find myself uh, 
going on to YouTube and watching other people's modeling efforts instead of uh, doing my own. Uh, not ready to do that yet. And just one little spot back here, yeah. And we will be we will be done. On on a situation like this, you know, you can, how wide do I make this uh, tar strip? And the reality is that over the years they'd probably keep going back adding tar and uh, as they generated leaks which they were bound to do. And, uh, and so there's probably a prototype for just about any width. So don't stress over it if you think, oh my goodness, I got it a little bit thicker than I wanted it. Because you try to get that up, you're just going to make a mess out of your roof. Just live with it and come up with a good backstory. You know, well, we had the hurricane of 85 and we almost lost that smoke vent. It was wiggling all over the place and we had to go up and slap tar all over it. Okay, that looks pretty good actually. And uh, I'm getting closer and closer to being done with uh, the build on this uh, uh, engine house. Once again, I'd say if you enjoy the video, uh, give it a like. And if you enjoy uh, my collection of videos, and I think this is number 30 now, uh, then subscribe to my YouTube channel. Okay, for now.